back uh this is part two of our uh childhood book discussion um and uh part one is um uh we we really got into it in part one we so did. we were very passionate about part yeah one. we're super passionate well we're both authors um oh yeah so our books are available on amazon and kindle.com um so right. anyway uh you can you can find our books by the way uh if you go to um amy's instagram page um which is author underscore amy just search amy asbury and then uh, my instagram page also author robbie ann um, or go to glitter Bee girls whatever so barnesandnoble.com amazon.com yeah search our names Google it. Google um, it if you care if you want yeah because you know uh, we're, we're fiction writers and and um, amy's published so many great books and i have well, mine are not fiction I've, I've written one fiction but mine are about my actual life because i don't really know how to write other well than yeah let's say they're yeah okay they're they're uh autobiographical but it but it was yes. some of it's fictionalized right like no some of the didn't you I change wish. names and stuff i changed names yeah okay but no i wish it was fictional but no oh. unfortunately not yeah so um so check out amy's non-fictionalized books thank but... you <laughs> <laughs> and my fiction anyway so back into the book discussion so yes, you were yes. saying um there were okay in part one we talked about the mm -hmm. gut punch books the books Ugh. that like scarred us for life um right. and and just still to this day and so but what two books were an inspiration what what book hit you and you were like yeah this is this is pivoting me for the better you know what? Okay, so these books, again, were re-released. There's a book called A Little Princess, um, which was first published in 1905. You guys. Frances Hod Hodgson Burnett. Saying Frances the name wrong, Hodgson sure. Burnett. Darling, listen. So anyway, you've seen the movie. I mean, Shirley Temple did the movie. Then it was some other kid. You know, it, it's been around for a century. However, they re-released it in 1985-86 when I was at my impressionable age and trying not to listen to Darling Nikki or anything on the <laughs> PMRC list. <laughs> anyway, so this, you know, all the stuff's around you, like the Scorpions are on MTV and like Def Leppard. And I'm in my room reading A Little Princess, right? Nice. So what it is, is um, this little wealthy, wealthy little girl goes, she's uh, has only a father. He's, his name is uh, Captain Crew, and her name's Sarah Crew. She goes to a girls' school, and she's very terribly, terribly kind. Um, she makes friends with the maids and, you know, makes friends with the little mouse on the wall. Just sweet, sweet girl. Her father dies, loses all of his fortune. They keep her at the school as, like, a charity case. Take away all of her riches. Take away all of her wardrobe. Take away her doll's wardrobe. They're like, you have to go sleep with the maids. You know, down in the friggin' scullery basement, right? And as a kid, you're all, oh my gosh, you heard it. You know, because you read about all these beautiful, her doll had these like sable muffs and like these beautiful, <laughs> like these wardrobes they described. And her room is this like this gorgeous ice cream colored room. And you're like, just a little fireplace in there. And she has tea. And you're all excited reading the book. Anyway, she the whole rug is pulled out from under this chick. And, you know, you're 11. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is this is crazy. I would cry and scream and be a total bitch, you know? Yeah. Through the book, she is so lovely. She remained the same character-wise, no matter what her circumstances were. And I never huh. forgot that. Okay. And she um But is there a happy rags. ending? Because this is not... It, there's a lovely ending. Okay, okay. So it's not, it's not so a gut she, punch book. Not a gut punch book. So she is like this... You know, she, there's always someone worse than her. So she's starving. She's out in the freezing cold. She finds a little half penny or whatever it was back then. A hay penny? Hay penny. She goes <laughs> in to buy like a warm cross bun or something from the bakery. Hot and she's all excited. Buns. She's about to pass out because she's so hungry. And she sees a girl more poor than she. And who's looking in the window who looks way worse than her. And she's like, damn it. You know, and she buys it and gives it to the girl. And um, you're like, this this girl is like, wow, I would never do that. All you're thinking through the whole thing is, I would never be that cool. You yeah. know? So she, I, uh, the, the book teaches you grace. Grace and character. And she yeah. was so lovely throughout the book. She refused 
to become a jerk because of her circumstances. Okay. So anyway, at the end, um, it turns out her father is not dead and they're looking for her. They're looking for her everywhere. So then this wealthy neighbor moves in and, you know, they, they end up finding her father and she becomes even more, you know, he has a diamond mind and her life's even better than before. And she saves a little poor girl and t- takes the, the little scullery maid from the girl's school who they treated so terribly. And she's like, you're going to come work with me. We're going to be best friends, you know? Aww. So you're just like, wow. And, and anyway, so t- to me, I always thought, well, if your life turns terrible, then you get to be terrible. Like you, you have every right to be terrible because your life's terrible. Yeah. But I read this and I thought, you know what? It's kind of like Cinderella. She still had character. Right, right. Or, or so, you know what? In a real life know, example, like Anne Frank. You know, mm-hmm. if you ever read the Diary of Anne Frank, and and I think uh-huh. most of us read it in school when we were impressionable. I mean, talk about a gut punch book. Holy crap! You know, she, she's so um, she writes so vividly in her diary, and mm-hmm. and but she, you know, that line I'll never forget that line where she says, "I do believe that people are for the most part good." You know, and I'm I like, oh, my that. God, she's like You're hiding like, in an what? attic from Nazis. And, you know, and somehow she still she finds, really cry, yeah. you know, some kind of uh, sun, you know, silver lining. Like, uh-huh. what an incredible character. And then, you know, Love in the, the end, end, when it just stops, like, oh, and you know what happened to her. I mean, oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Talk about a gut punch. Yeah, that's. Brutal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that one that one really made me think, and it could have been the age that it hit me mm-hmm. at. Yeah. But I thought, okay. And then another book by the same woman, which was published um, in 1911, was, and we've all heard of this, The Secret Garden. Oh, yeah. Mary Mary, quite contrary. She's this little brat. Yeah. She's born in British India from, from these wealthy British parents. They, they, were, they didn't like her. And she's all sullen and yellow and kind of bratty, and she's just a jerk, you know? And they, they bring her to Misselwaith Manor on the Yorkshire Moors. And she's sour and she's rude. And she's Missile just kind of like, anyway. Manor on the Yorkshire Yeah, she's just a jerk, as you guys know. But anyway, throughout the thing, she's grown, she's cutting buds. And plants are coming through the earth constantly in the book. And she's carving away dead things. And you're like, oh, I want to grow something. Aww. So um, the theme is like a regeneration and like, yeah. um, you know, things that are neglected wither and die but when you work on something and you care for it it thrives you know that's yeah, the theme yeah. of it and it made me want to go like take care of something and work on something and dig in the earth i'd like a <laughs> spot of earth mother <laughs> i'd like to talk to my mom in a british accent mommy She's like, what the hell? i'd like to grow something in the garden May, might i have a bit of earth mama but yeah then i <laughs> i called her, i started calling her mum, and she was all mom. pissed off i'm like mumsy why She's are like, you calling me mum? Up. Go, go watch the Scorpions, and I'll buy you some high heels. <laughs> go put on MTV. Oh, no, put Robbie, what are you growing in here? <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to go garden and, like, take care of something and work on something. Anyway, so those are the two that, to me, I just felt like this wonderful feeling after reading those two. Oh, I love it. You know, I, I have two that are, are great as well. Um uh, after the the gut punch of of the bear's house, um, so the Princess Bride. Of course, I read that. Um, geez, I think I was a junior in high school, so eighty four ish or something. I, I read it before the movie was even an idea. Am I dumb that I didn't know it was a book? I guess that everything has to be well. A book first. No, I mean, there's tons of movies. I don't know their books, right? But um. Uh, the movie came out in eighty seven, and I have yes. to I have to say this: the movie, in my opinion, really nailed it. Like, oh, good. Like when I watched the movie, I wasn't like, oh, that's not how I pictured it. You know, like oh, the good. movie was really there was a lot cut out though because the the book is so rich and uh, absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, I mean. It, it is, and, and William Goldman was the writer, and he adapted uh-huh. his own novel um, for the screenplay. So, oh, no wonder. Yeah, and it, and the two uh, leads, um, Carrie Elways and Robin yes. Wright, they were so perfect. Like, oh. just absolute nailed it. So I, I really loved that book. The, the book 
that was the first I think uh, that was the first book that really made me want to um, create something that was like a painting with words you know interesting and I still haven't gotten there yet like I my writing style right now where I'm at it's um, it's more about the story you know than the art of the words to me and I'm hoping that as I keep writing and, and keep going that I'll get there. You know, it's like look, looking at Steinbeck or something like you read, you right. know, Steinbeck was something I got into in college and I, and I was just like, holy crap. I mean, oh, you so don't even beautiful. need a story like with it, you know, <laughs> although he I had don't them. even care. I just like the descriptions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just the way he wrote, it was like, God, it, it was amazing. It was pungent. Yes. Like his word. He just, yes. he's such a great writer. And William Goldman, in my opinion, is, is uh is that type of writer not the same style but he's the type of writer where you're just in love with the way he talks about things and so that that was a beautiful book um oh i loved it and the other one that kind of like your um kind of like your little princess book where it affected you know how you are and stuff uh when i read uh wrinkle in time um which we read it in school like it was a lesson right. and uh dissected a lot of it but i just i related a lot to the little girl and um there was there were things in the book you know that obviously it's a fantasy story but there were just um things in the book and things that she did um that made me rethink how I did things and you know interesting the, yeah it, that that really that kind of stuck to me a lot um so I I definitely was affected by it. you know I, I enjoyed the movie too although they changed I started laughing stuff. out loud when I saw big Oprah in the sky oh. <laughs> I, I started laughing out loud the image. I couldn't get <laughs> Wasn't she like one of the little, uh, one of the fairies or what the heck was it again? Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, it the the movie, um, it really got Reese Witherspoon. It got lambasted, freaking Mindy Kaling, which I didn't think it deserved the, you know, the pounding that it got. But um, it, Mindy they did... Kaling with blue eyes shadowed and deserve pounding. No, I love Mindy Kaling. Mindy I Ka love her Mindy too. But she belongs in there. She can. She can do what she can dye her beautiful hair black or i mean blonde it's like I, mrs. She can dye her beautiful mrs. Blonde. i don't care what she does mrs witch i just i just started laughing because i just knew who they were i couldn't like it just took me out of it yeah it, i started like giggling like well, i was like see, five that's kind of that was the issue with the movie for me i enjoyed the movie but when i saw the movie i kept saying god that's not what i pictured that's not how I pictured it. You know, that's not how. Uh, yeah. And it, so, you know, conversely with The Princess Bride, where William Goldman himself wrote the screenplay. Right. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure why they would um, <laughs> divert from the book because the book was just so, so perfect. Charles Wallace. But, um, Charles, wasn't there like a dog named something really cool? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, crap. I just remember Charles Wallace was, was the, the little boy. Name? Yeah, what was the dog's name? Oh. I keep thinking Breckenridge. It's not Breckenridge though. Uh, well, now we got to now we got to look at Quarter it. Flash. Quarter Flash. Quarter. I'm gonna harden my heart. Yeah, no, I don't think I need to it. know what the name of that damn dog is. I'm looking I it up. It. I'm looking it up. All right, so I, I just, a wrinkle I just in time. Googled, what? I just googled wrinkles in time. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know why that's don't, funny. You're gonna get a pop up. Wrinkles in time. Wish like, you hadn't. Yeah, <laughs> there's all kinds of well, crazy, so bad. crazy stuff. Oh all right, so wait, why are you looking at that dog? Quarter, there's a quarter book quarter called flash. Wrinkles in Time, and it's about <laughs> it's about cosmology. Oh my god, who writes a book called Wrinkles in Time about cosmology? Oh, that wow. is hysterical. And there's of course all there's right, a link so... on Wikipedia that's like for Wrinkle in Time. Click here. Um. Goodness yeah, sake. Okay, okay, so this book actually won the Newbery Medal, which is a big deal, y'all, in 63. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, Meg Murray meets this uh, a neighbor who's talking about something called a tesseract. And then it's some kind of scientific thing. The dad is working on this, like, mysterious thing, and he disappears, you guys. So Meg... Oh, that's recall, one thing the movie nailed. 
they had Chris Pine playing the dad. Chris Pine. Chris they Pine. Did. I don't care what he's in. Like uh, my right? ass is in the seat. <laughs> I pay my ticket. I go <laughs> or I download it or whatever it takes. He was yeah, great. and then <laughs> so yeah, Meg and Charles Wallace. I think they just called him Charles in the movie. And then there's like a classmate, like their friend Calvin. They go and they they visit Mrs. What's its house, and then Mrs. Who and Mrs. Which, whatever Oprah and Reese. Anyway, they're like kind of beings. They're like supernatural beings. And then they, anyway, they, they transport the kids through the universe, guys, through the Tesseract. So what? So you, what did you think of that book? You just you just was I lo- it out, oh, to, out there for you? No, or? no, I loved it. See, once again, you know, Madeline Lingle. Is that how you say her name? L- Engel? I Lingle? So. I so. Lingle? I don't know. Um, she, there's an apostrophe. Apostrophes confuse me in names. So no, you said it right. Yeah. Um, she, once again, was such a vivid writer. And mm-hmm. she just um, took you into this world. And it, that's another book um, I would like yeah, to I reread. I the darkness about that book, though. I read it as a bedtime story. My boy, of course. I don't know what age he was, but it, it, it felt very dark and strange. Yeah, so, but, I don't know. But I, I liked but it was that good. about it. It was good. Yeah, I liked the dark strangeness because it, it was kind. Of, it's kind of like watching a horror movie or something where uh-huh. um, the way that she did it, it wasn't like a gut punch book where it scarred you for life and it you know. It was well done. It was yeah, well done. And and it it was sort of like experiencing the fear, but you still felt okay, and the characters were so great and. I I really the book really came alive in my head like that yes. that, that's that might be what that might be why the the Narnia movies and this movie Wrinkle in Time was so hard to uh, do because the books were so they were movies unto themselves they were movies in your head right and so when you try to translate that um, it it may not be as magical because you're you know, I don't know. I can't explain it. I really can't. I you, mean, know maybe... I can... you know what I need you to explain? What? What the heck does Fortinbras mean? Fortinbras or Fortinbras. That's the dog's name. Fortinbras. Now, I would have never come up with that. I don't remember that at all. Quarter Flash. Fortinbras <laughs> I'm a or Bra. Hard. What was the other What was the other hit Quarter Flash had? There was now I'm going to get me Googling something else. <laughs> I'm a good swallow my tears. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They had so another Ford hit. Ross is also the name of a former king of Norway and the father of the crown prince. Oh, there you go. And it, it was in Hamlet. It's Norwegian. Oh, Shakespearean. Fortinbras. Oh, for goodness okay, sakes. Okay, I'm looking up Quarter Flash. I All right, well, anyway, Wrinkle in Time. Oh, I felt it was... Find another, find another fool to love you. That oh, was their other gosh, hit. That sounds like somebody, I could picture a solid gold dancer doing like some kind of... Sh- shoulder movement oh that, yeah and they had a third said. one take me to heart damn it's me a miracle take me to... they Sounds had hard in my heart same. and then take me to heart yes anyway, sorry sidebar um so yeah so, so wrinkle in time so you liked the you like to look the escape um kind of like the escapism ones i did too I yeah will say. It, it wasn't I wasn't like a sci-fi head or anything like that i was a little but... scared of it because i liked books that were more domestic and that were in the home. Mm-hmm. Like I needed the four walls. I didn't want to be scared. I didn't want to go off. I did not read this as a child. I did not want to go off into the universe like this. Um, Narnia even scared me slightly. But I, I did read this as a bedtime story, like I said. And I did think it was very well written. I mean, of course, obviously. Wow, it's I had the total book. opposite feeling. I I didn't even want to come back from those worlds. Ooh. And maybe maybe that had something to do with my childhood at the time when I read the books, you know, because things, both books, things were not great in my family. And so I like, like, especially with Narnia, holy crap. When I read Narnia, I, I literally didn't want the seventh book to end. And I just, I, I tried to read it again, but it wasn't quite the same. Oh, and, I read it again. I read it a bunch of times. Yeah. It, but it didn't, I couldn't read it again, which is really bizarre. Like, I love those books so much, and I tried to go back into the world and yeah. watch it, you know, and, and, like, read it again. But I couldn't – it was not the same magic as when I – when it was new to me. I, I can't that even explain sense. that one. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't tend to read 
fiction books more than once. Like I'll watch a movie 800 times, but I, I just, I don't know. I don't really read. I'll read a nonfiction book a couple times. I have listened but... to Anti Mame literally four or five times within the past month. Uh, oh, the audio audiobook. book. Oh, the the language is so lovely. Yeah, and the narrator, the person reading it, I think his name is Christopher Lane. Christopher, you're great. It, is it like so an English great. guy? Like, um, no. If like... if he isn't English, he is reading it in an, uh, an American accent. Oh, but um, he does a ton of different voices. But like um, Auntie I really. Mean. No, darling, I'm your Auntie Ming, which is why I keep saying darling because I keep hearing this darn audiobook. But anyway, so cute. And um, I can't stop listening to it over and over. Aw. I, I don't. What was the last audiobook? The last audiobook I listened to was um, Carrie Fisher, uh, Wishful Drinking. So funny. I think yeah, I that was really good. listened to that years back. I'm yeah. going to tell you what's on my Audible right now, you guys. I have to listen to these stories as I go to bed. I but, can't, um, yeah, that, that's a good thing to listen to. And your your Sunset Strip Diaries is on um, audio, right? You know what? It's just on. I just did it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I was going to put it on Audible, but there's so many things. And I was like, oh, it's such a pain. Sorry, guys. I'll put it up on there at some point. But it's just free on YouTube. You do not have to buy it off Audible. I could probably set that up, but it's just the list of how to do it was way too long. <laughs> how Green Was My Valley by Richard Llewellyn. How um, Green I got some, Was My Valley. Yeah, Muriel Spark, a couple of Muriel Spark books. Um, I don't know. There's a whole bunch of things, but I just like these narrators and they're just comfy to listen to sometimes. You know, the, the very first audio cassette I became aware of well, audio thing. My hmm. dad, back in the day, I was a little kid. He right. had a cassette tape version of uh, the power. Was it the power? Or no, it was Think and Grow Rich. Oh, the Napoleon, Napoleon Hill. Hill. Yeah. Yeah. And because my dad, uh, there was a period of time when I was little where he was traveling a lot, um, you know, like uh, sales kind of job. So he was in the car driving around. And... Um, we we had a tape player in our uh, International Scout, oh my. which started out as an eight track, and then oh Dad my. swapped it out for uh, actual cassettes. But um, but yeah, he had this was probably, um, gosh, must have been late seventies, I guess. Um, wow! And he he was a big fan of that book, and and um, and I, I mean it was like a big huge like a three ring binder size and, uh -huh. you know, and it had like Tony Robbins had 10, that too. <laughs> exactly. It was like 10 cassettes. In the eighties. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was my first. Awaken the giant within. Oh, I read all those. Books. By the way, that's on my audible also guys. That's like my first one. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I really, love Tony Robbins. I dig those books. Yeah. He, there, there are things him. that, that I learned. I read, um, one of those books. I can't remember which one now, uh, 30 years ago. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, well, was what, which was that really one? good, right? I don't know, the power, something, whatever. And yeah, he, you're actually really good. He said, um, he said, if you're working towards something, do at least one thing every day toward that goal. And, uh, and man, that has stuck with me for 30 years. And whenever oh, there's something that. like a like a big project, right, you know, or something that I want to achieve, even writing my own novel, I, I remember right. I, I sort of decided it was like, OK, I want to get this done. I'm going to do one thing every day toward making it real. And sometimes it was just plain writing. Sometimes if I if I was exhausted and I couldn't write, I would work on, you know, cover ideas or I'd be you know, messing around with programs and learning different things that I needed to learn. But um, I I just find that really good advice. And, and there are lots of That's other cool. little Great nuggets advice. of wisdom in there. But yeah, okay, so another sidebar. We're sidebar. No, we should call this episode sidebar. No, but that's a book. That's that's not a sidebar. It's about a book. <laughs> yeah, but it it's just not a, one you read when you were seven. Book, but yeah. read. You know what I want to know? What? Did you ever read like a naughty book? What were you saying that you read of your mother's? Um... Oh, one time, um, I remember when I was a little kid, there was a 
copy of Princess Daisy in the house. Now, my mom was not a novel reader. My mom was a magazine. She liked magazines. I read um, my mother... Uh, maybe it was one of my aunts left out some cosmopolitan magazines once and I was young and I read them and I was, Oh, cause there were always like tips of gross things. You yeah. Know? And they had and very like, booby Pan. covers like cosmopolitan very. always had booby covers. Yes. And you know what else? Um, when I was 12 and 13, my friend, Aaron, we would sleep, her dad would go sleep on the couch and let us sleep in his room. Cause he had a giant water bed and we were like kids. Oh, like, water kind of, bed. I know it sounds crazy, but I would look in his Stephen King books. And try to find like the crazy parts and like read them, so it was funny. Yeah, I never, I never understood water beds. They just seemed so unstable and uncomfortable to me. And I, I, forever want to sleep on my mattress is hard as a rock, and I can't imagine like blue, 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 blue. You know, when you get in bed and just like it's I just uh, never stops moving. <laughs> you know, because I shift around a lot and I kind of move around. I don't know. I couldn't do that, and I didn't. There were. I don't remember any other books in my home. Really, there was a lot of like religious books. Mm-hmm. Um, there was like the Bible was always around, or streams in the desert. My mom had this like, hmm. I don't know what it was, but we didn't really have books. Yeah, we, my books. We didn't have. Um, there would be like an occasional novel or an occasional book laying around, but I would never see it again. Like we didn't have like sh- uh, shelves of books. You know, where you would go and reach for something. And we did not have the Encyclopedia Britannica. So when I I had to do homework, I I had to go Mm -hmm. to the damn neighbor's house or I had to go to the library. Because, you know, it was such a pain in the butt. Oh, blooded. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was cold. I was like, why can't we get the encyclopedia? And my mother's like, because you buy it and a year later it's no good. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. I'm like, Mom, the stuff about dinosaurs is going to stay the stuff about dinosaurs. The only thing that's really going to change is maybe the, the maps. The maps definitely changed around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but I'm like, but I am I need to write this report now. And, of course, I left everything to the last minute. So, so what, what reports do you remember having to do It was like back oh, in the day? 10th grade. 10th mm-hmm. grade. Okay, this is our last sidebar. And then all right, all we're right, closing out this podcast. So 10th grade. History, honors history. Mr. Okay. Mr. Kreinheater, wherever he is. Whoa, 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 shout Mr. out Mr. Kreinheater. Mr. Kreinheater. Kreinheater? Yes. Um, oh he, uh, he had us all pick a country in Africa, and we had to do a report. And so I picked my country, and I it was an oral report. Oh, so scary. I stood up, and, and he had um, already set up, remember the overhead projector? Of course. Right. So it's not like a slide. It's like this transparency thing that sets. And then, and it was like, it was like 10,000 degrees. So um, he puts the map of the country, you know, according to each kid. And so you stand in front of this map and you're like, oh, you know, you do your report. Uh So I get up there and this is the Ramona Quimby in me. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, my name is Robbie Ann McPherson. My report is on Tanzania. Tanzania, uh-huh. you know, and I went on and on and on about Tanzania. Tanzania this, yeah. Tanzania that, Tanzania, Tanzania. And I finished the report, you know, and everyone's like, uh, you know, yeah. Mr. Mr. Kreinheater goes, well, I'm doing his voice, by the way. Okay. Well, um, it's Tanzania. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is it? Tanzania? It's Tanzania. So I've I, never I, heard that. I was like, oh. <laughs> and he had been to Africa. It was like his thing. Like he, Aww, he's traveled. He used to show us Rob. like vacation slides and all this stuff. Like he was like Mr. Africa. And I learned so much about the continent of Africa and all these different countries. Apparently, I was absent the day he talked about Tanzania because I went and did this whole report about Tanzania. Yeah, it was pretty. Well, that was the American in you. And by the way, before <laughs> we close out, uh, you know, one of those books really did affect you that I'm noticing. The shirt you're wearing right now, yeah, um, has to do with one of the books. Um, oh yeah, yeah. My, I'm wearing a sweatshirt that says "Barely Awake," and there's barely, a bear. yeah, is spelled B-E-A-R-L-Y, and there's a bear on the shirt. Get it? The bear's barely house. awake. 
Yeah, it's like the I bear's just, house. See, traumatize you. You guys go back to fashion. part one, and I talk about the bear's house and how it traumatized me. The bear's house by Marilyn Sex. Beautiful book, horrible gut punch. I mean, you'll never recover from reading it. You just won't. It's it's so sad. <laughs> I never did. Yeah. Oh my girl. Yeah. All right. Well, so we want to thank you guys for um, hanging out. I mean. You know, we did have a moment where, right, Aim, where we were like, is this not, you know, should we not talk about this? Is it too boring? But I I think it's... I love books. I think a lot of people right? do. Right? Me too. Yeah. And yeah. I think people who listen to podcasts are people that normally would be reading, but they're just driving and they can't sit down and read. So they're like, you know, I need some stimulation. Right, I right. they mind. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I would listen to this if other people like us were talking about it, especially if they were goofy like us. So, you know. They're definitely goofy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thanks, everybody. Um, don't forget, visit our Instagram and let us know what you think. And um, we also have a website, glitterboomgirls.com. Uh, That's right. So I'm over here, author Robbie Ann McPherson signing off, and Amy Asbury signing off. Have a lovely day. Bye.